Awesome. My name is Steven Hawes, and this is the Lumen PNP Pick and Place Machine. It's meant to be really good for mid scale manufacturing. So, if you're making between like one or like 500 uh, units a year, you can probably do it in your pajamas on the weekends. But if you're making like over 5,000, you're probably gonna hire a company to make them all for you. But this fills that niche in between where you can make about that range of PCBs yourself on your desktop, in your garage, on your workbench. It's all completely 3D printed parts. It's all totally open source. So if you wanna buy one yourself, you don't have to pay us a dime. If you want a tool instead of a project, you can pick up a kit. Uh, but all of the design is totally open. We have a community of about 3,000 people that are in there making mods and stuff. Uh, but I'll show you how it works. So we start off by putting a little bit of solder paste on a blank board. Do you have a blank board somewhere around here? Uh, Thank you. So this is the PCB we've been making today uh, at the event. This is an open source hardware logo and it just has a bunch of LEDs on it for a demo. Um, what Bryce is doing here is he's putting a little bit of solder paste on it, which is pretty much tiny little balls of solder suspended in flux. And he's scraping it across the stencil and it's only putting paste on the board exactly where we need it. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to hold the parts onto the board for us when we actually go to place all the components on it. And then when we put it in, my poor mom, this is her old toaster oven that I modified to reflow all the boards. When we put them, them in there, all the solder paste is going to turn into molten metal and it's going to solder all the components onto the board. So, oh, this one's already pasted. Wonderful. So if you want to hit go. So now what the machine is doing, it actually has a lot of cameras on it and it's looking at the board and it's finding a couple shiny little spots on the PCB and it's figuring out exactly where it needs to go to place all the parts. And then it's gonna go over to this tape that we have over here that has all the components we actually want, and it's gonna go down, turn on the vacuum pump, hold it over a camera to see where it is, and then it's gonna place it down. And it's just gonna go through and it's gonna place all these parts down for us. These cameras are really, really important because what they do is they let any little tiny inconsistencies with where the component is, they're going to completely correct for that. So my computer is running a bunch of machine vision that's finding the orientation of all of it and it's making sure that it places it exactly where they need to go. Now this tape is all just pull through. So when we run out of the parts, you have to pull the tape through to load them up again. But this is a feeder and this is gonna automatically serve all the parts up for us. They're coming out a little later this year. This is one of the uh, prototypes I've been working on. I, I, re I ran the job part way through. I gotta uh, turn these back on again. And uh, this is gonna make it so you don't ever have to like reload the tape manually. It will just automatically move new components through for you every time that it needs another part. So it's a lot less manual. It's gonna make a lot, the whole process a lot more automated. Um, we're really excited about it. This is my eighth attempt at it and I have the boards for the ninth version coming in the mail. So we've tuned a lot of things about it and we're really, really excited about it. It's gonna be cool. And it's all open source, just like everything we do, it's all open. We actually make all of the controller boards for this machine with the machine itself. So it's a true PCB rep wrap. This is the controller for the machine. And we make this using the machine at our, uh, our facility in Pittsburgh. We just have it sitting there running them all day long. Um, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and then once it's done, we can take it out. I think it, uh, I, I messed up the job a little bit. Uh, I accidentally told it that a few of them are still, uh, still on there. And uh, once it's finished, we can take the board and put it into the reflow oven. And what this is gonna do is the paste actually really needs a very specific temperature profile. So you can see it's warming up. You can't just bring it to a temperature. You actually have to bring it to a very specific temperature and it will follow a curve. So you'll see here, it's actually gonna give you a really specific profile that it needs to heat up to. This is what it looks like when it's done. So it has all the little components have been placed on there. No one has had to touch it aside from moving it from one machine to another. You can see all the LEDs and resistors are, are all soldered on there, no problem. This is actually a USB-C connector. It goes inside a cable of a USB-C connector because we didn't want to have to put a connector on this board. So it actually plugs inside the cable and those little leads just connect into it. Um, for us, it's great because we are in that mid-scale where like, we don't want to hire a contract manufacturer and pay a whole bunch of extra money to have them make it for us. Uh, sometimes it can be cheaper, but our boards are complicated enough that if you try and go to some of the service bureaus, it's a little, it, it doesn't really make sense for us to do it. Um, so for people like that, it, it's a great solution. We have hundreds of people out there that use it to make their product every day. Uh, it's really cool to see them do that. So this is a piece of software called OpenPNP. Uh, it's an awesome open source uh, package that is meant specifically to run pick and place machines. So you can see here, these are the two webcam feeds that are watching 
not only top vision, but bottom vision. There's actually two cameras on the machine. So it's watching and it's looking at the part, it's identifying where it is and it's placing it right where it needs to go based on that. These are all my placements I have on the job. So you can see there's seven um, diodes, there's seven resistors, and then these three fiducials are the dots that it scans at the beginning of the board. Um, and that's how it knows exactly where the board is in space. Um, so all of the software that's actually controlling uh, like the serial port and uh, the cameras is OpenPMP, but this thing runs stock Marlin. We actually had to add a couple extra features into Marlin to get it to support pick and place operations, but this is all just Marlin. We made a few edits, but we also merged them all back into mainline. So anyone that wants to build their own pick and place can take advantage of the things that we added uh, and use Marlin for it. Yep, there it is. And like that, we got a finished board. <laughs> and this is a really simple board, like I was saying before, like, we can do up to, uh, with just the strip feeders, uh, about 50 unique components, which is okay, uh, but when we get uh, automated feeders, the powered feeders included, you're looking at like 100 to 110 unique parts and as many placements as you can fit on a board. We're also not panelizing the board here, which means you have a really big PCB with a lot of smaller ones inside that you can break out. Um, and we just don't do that here because we're at an event, but normally when we make these boards, they're in a panel of two. When we make the lights, the ring light PCBs that are also part of the machine, they're in a panel of 12. So we make 12 of them at a time, and once they're done being populated, we break them all out individually. Um, so this is just kind of showing how it works, but you can do complicated boards on this. This is how we make these. Yeah. It goes down to 0402 support. Technically, we say 0603, but we have dozens of people in the community that use 0402 all the time. Um, I'm just, I really want to put it through its paces before we say it, but it works with 0402. Uh, we do TQFP100 uh, packages all the time. Uh, 0.5 millimeter pitch is a really good metric to say we do that no problem. Uh, some customers use QFN 0.4 millimeter pitch, which are pretty small and big. Uh, you think about an angular um, offset. If you have a, a tiny angular offset, but the part is really big, that's gonna matter a lot on a bigger part. So a bigger part sometimes can be a lot harder than a smaller one. Um, but we, we can handle mostly anything, unless you're making an iPhone, you're probably gonna be okay making your board on this thing. So this board right here is a board that we designed that's really meant for just calibration. So we use it for homing. When you home, we have sensorless homing on X and Y using the uh, TMC 2209s. That only gives you plus or minus 200 microns. And when it comes to an application like that, that is nowhere close to precise enough. So what we actually do is there is a tiny little dot on this board over here. And what that dot does is it gives us our actual home position. So the camera moves over it, it finds where that dot is using machine vision and that sets home. And that way every single time it always comes back to the same place. So homing is really just a suggestion of where the head is in space. We really use the fiducial for really finding out where we are. Um, there's a whole bunch of other calibration features for calibrating the camera, uh, calibrating exposure, calibrating the pixels per millimeter, which is a really important setting for vision. You need to know in the machine vision, when you see a certain number of pixel offset, how far do you move the head to make up for that difference? Um, and that's a, that's a really important thing to have accurate. We even have support with these uh, gold-plated pads for a little bit of run-out calibration, so we can tap off on here um, and be able to connect back to the motherboard. This whole panel is actually a PCB. These are huge PCBs that we use for this. <laughs> it's pretty meta. <laughs> Um, things that we didn't expect. Sometimes we would have a, uh, an issue which was really funny where it, no matter what we did, the nozzle would just not pick the part. And we realized it was because the nozzle had actually gone into a little bit of solder paste. So it had just been clogged up with a tiny little bit of paste. So you can just clean it out really easily. Uh, but for the longest time, I was banging my head against the wall like, why is it not picking the part? Why is it not? And I realized, oh, there's a little bit of paste in there. So I cleaned it right out and it worked just fine. So that was kind of a funny thing. There's some weird, there's some different things with pick and places and like SMT assembly that you might not think of. You're dealing with tiny little parts that can fly away very easily. And a 3D printer, it's still an XYZ Cartesian motion system, but it's doing a totally different thing. Um, another thing also is you have the solder paste on the board and it almost acts as a little bit of a glue to hold the parts after it's placed it. So you can't just place it on the paste, you have to press it in. So you actually kind of want to drive it a little bit extra into the board to really make sure that it's seated in the paste well. So that was something that it took me a while to learn. I was not placing them in quite as deep as I should have and they would fall off as I was moving in into the oven. Um, so placing a little extra was something that was a little unintuitive. Oh, uh, yeah, focal plane. Uh, the thing that makes this really seriously different than a 3D printer is the machine vision. That is the thing that makes it significantly different. So a lot of what we did was experiment with the cameras and the different lenses. Where is this camera placed in space so that it can see the part well? And not only a really wide field of view, but also that we're not moving the part really high up or really low down so that it's not gonna collide with other stuff on the machine. So figuring out all the lenses and the focal distance and the planes and like calibrating out the fisheye, 
OpenPMP handles a lot of that for us, but we also had a lot of experimentation of what kind of cameras do we buy, what resolution do you need. The cameras are only 720p because 1080p is overkill. We tried 1080p, but they're so magnified, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so a lot of things with the, the vision. Uh, it's so different from a 3D printer. I've played around with printers for a long time. This is kind of a printer in its ethos, but the vision is a completely separate thing. So most of the things that we learned in the process of getting this thing together was about the vision. But yeah, that's Lumen PNP. It's a whole SMT line all on a you know, 30 inch by six foot table. <laughs> uh, you can find everything out about us on opulo.io, O-P-U-L-O.io. Uh, you can find the source, build your own, find our Discord community, pick up a kit, you name it. And that brings us to today's sponsor, JLC PCB. Now, the Lumen Pick and Place is awesome if you're doing enough boards to justify getting one. But if you need boards for projects, you probably aren't quite at that volume yet. JLC PCB can manufacture and assemble those boards for you. I love using their service. And in fact, Opulo are also having just their bare PCBs manufactured by JLC PCB. And you can now also get 3D prints made by JLC PCB, like these. They offer everything from FDM over resin, full color nylon, and even solid stainless steel. So if you need some parts that you aren't quite equipped to make yourself, uh, check out JLC PCB's 3D printing service or their PCBA service at the link below.